Hi there guys, this is Farmer Bob. Welcome to my channel. Great to be back guys with uh, with you and with another video. <laughs> Good man. If this is your first time on my channel, a warm welcome to you. Please do uh, do the hit and uh, just smash that subscribe button as well as the like button if you like the content. I hope you do. <laughs> Great man. Yes guys, um, uh, yeah, let's uh, just visit a bit together and uh, catch up a bit on where we are and what we're going to do today. Uh, first thing we're going to do is, uh, this video is all about creating a custom cow um, husbandry, uh, animal husbandry. There's been a lot of requests for that, so I've, I finally just thought, let me let me get stuck in and do that for us so that we can all um, have a look at how that works and um, how to set it up and how to make your own custom uh, cow husbandry. Great, guys. So, yes, sit back and relax with me. Grab a cup of coffee or whatever you like to drink and let's uh, let's get stuck into the whole process now i'm going to take the angle guys of two directions on this video uh, the first one is if you want to make a mod in other words you want to take your little cow custom cow husbandry that you've made and create a mod for 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 it or with it and then you can put that mod out to be in your mods folder and it will be loaded into the game if you buy it and place it in the game so that's the one direction and similar to that but just a little bit different is the other one where you build the actual husbandry into a map in other words it's part of the map it's not a mod that you can place in the game you know so um, that's the two directions I want to use and I'm going to do them both together and uh, yeah, so we we hit two flies with one swat, you know, whop, <laughs> and it's all done. <laughs> Guys, this will be a fairly long video, but what I will suggest is listen to the whole video one time through so you can get a bigger picture of how this whole thing works. And then once you've uh, listened to everything, because it's too... It, I've tried to present this video from two angles, obviously, and then um, once you've got a big picture and all the info is set into your uh, understanding, then uh, go through the video step by step and just duplicate all the um, things that we talked about, you know, so that should sort it out for you. Great, okay, so um, first things first, we need a cow husbandry to, um, to work with, so what we're going to do, I'm going to close that up. Um, let us go into the Farming Simulator 22 directory, the game directory, find the data folder, find the placeables, and in the lizard is the one we're looking for, small uh, cow barn, small, that one. So what you can do is copy this whole folder just as it is, there's a whole s a bunch of stuff in there, it's not a big um, thing, we just need all the workings of it, so right click on this, select properties, so I just want to see what the size of it is. It's 320, 340 kilobytes on disk, so that is minute, it's very small, so copy that, alright, and then what you're going to do, um, for, for this video's sake, I'm going to put it in my mods folder, because we're going to start off, obviously, as we're going to uh, look at this video, the two directions, one will be a mod, and the other one, we will place it in a, in a, in, in the map because that's basically where we want to customize it, is in, in a map situation. All right, so um, I don't know if we will we, we'll fully do the map one, but we might. Let's just see where, we, where it leads to. But the, the mod one is basically um, includes the map one as well, you know, so <laughs> it, it's like work hand in hand. All right, so here we go. The Cowbine Small, I'm going to leave it the name Cowbine Small, so let's just leave it in there. Now, first of all, when you make a mod, guys, you need a um, mod desk file. It's a mod description file. Any mod that you want to place in the game need a mod description, and the mod description tells um, tells the game that this is a mod, and this is the author, and this is uh, this is the XML that loads it, and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna need to find a mod desk for it. Now, the easiest place to get a mod desk is once again in your farming simulator directory. It is in there under, I think it's under SDK, Maps, and then choose any map you want. There will be a mod disk there. So we're going to copy that file in. Just copy that. I'm going to minimize this for later on. So drop it in here in our working directory for the cow barn. Great. And then open that up. Obviously, we want to modify it. Now in here, 
you can put your name I'm gonna g just put former Bob because that's uh, my screen name or what do you want to call it uh, probably a screen name and then give it a title Cow on small I'm just gonna put cow on uh, small like so cow on small I'm just gonna copy that into this other description down at the bottom uh, this is cow on whatever whatever now these things you can do on your own um, put your own stuff in there um, yeah just whatever you want in there the icon file for now you can create your own icon uh, give it uh, a name for it or whatever multiplayer obvious want to use um, that we take out we don't need the map stuff we can delete that whole um, section there of maps and now the next thing we're going to need is a store items line that pulls in the XML um, that is in the actual mod directory this one here now the store items points to this so that loads this and this one now loads the R3D as well as the nav mesh you'll see just now so let us find the store items for us so we're going to go back into the map US oh not the map US but the, the in-game um, farming simulator 2 directory go to data go to maps go to any of the maps again let's just choose map US and find the store items doesn't matter which one you choose um, first thing you want to do is copy this line together with the first line like there like so control C and just drop it into your mod desk here at the bottom control V and then what we're gonna do we're gonna take that line control C just to end off the store items and just put the forward slash here next to that greater add sign just like that and there you have it and now obviously this line we can delete we don't need that and now we're gonna just modify this line to point to the actual uh, um, XML that's in the directory now this is where uh, um, things is going to get different so I'm going to talk about that just now but let's just get this name Cowboy small control C back into the back into the uh, um, store items XML and then just take this whole thing out of the out of the way control V like so I shouldn't have deleted the dot XML there it is now this mod desk tells the game now to load the Calbon small dot XML it gives the icon file um, do we have an icon file in there let's just have a look uh, wait, do I don't have an icon file um, the icon file we are going to definitely need that but let's just open the Calbon small for now because I think we have a uh, image file there it is yeah store one small that png so that should be all right the store data has got that there it is and you can you can now create your own um little um image file for for your mod or not and then you just put that in your directory and give it the name and remove all this information in front so i'm going to leave that for now so it uses the in-game one but this we need to change the i3d gets loaded so we're going to take this out of the way so the carbon i3d gets loaded and then we're going to go down a bit clear areas leveling areas all these clear areas and leveling areas guys is now for the mod if you place it in your map permanently this stuff you can just delete the, the inner workings of it but leave that um, leave the um, the start and end because the game looks for that and it will give an error if it's not there so you can leave you can delete the inner workings of it if you put it in your map indoor areas um, indoor areas I believe is for your snow I believe that's for snow foliage areas I'm just looking for stuff that's got um, that's trigger markers that we're gonna leave because it's in game you can see it's dollar data what I'm looking for is the navigation mesh there it is animals all right so this nav mesh is also now in the directory of the mod uh, nav mesh you see there it is so there's two r3ds um, what they've done between fs19 and fs22 guys is in fs19 the calbon r3d also had inside of it the navigation mesh now the navigation mesh is where the cows walk upon it's a um, a nav area a navigation area that specifies for the cows where they must animate upon in other words where they must walk around 
So that's what all the what the navigation mess is, is telling the cows where they can walk and where they can't, you know. So, uh, but in FS22, they've now separately uh, made a separate nav mesh outside of the, the, the actual animal husbandry I3D. So they, they, that's a difference. So this XML now calls that I3D here. So we need to change the directory for that. Um, and it's in the root of this mod. So we can just delete everything in front of it. Navigation mesh I3D. Food, all that stays the same. Fences, we don't worry about. That still stays the same. Because it's going to load this fences uh, out of the game, the in-game. And there you go. That's all. I3D mappings you leave. So all the workings are in here. We want to have that in there and just leave it alone. That should be fine. All right, save that. Save our mod desk. And now the next thing you want to do is when you have this now out in your uh, mods folder, because um, I'm, I'm, I'm just pulling this out of the game. So now I want to just make sure that it's actually a working thing. You know, So let us go into the game and test and see if it is a working thing. All right, so that will be our next step is run into Farming Simulator 22 and just buy a small cow barn. There should be one now, um, cow barn small under the animals. So let's have a check there. Uh, let's go in here. New Farmer Elm Creek is a, a good one to load up just to test with. And then we're going to have a quick browse, buy a little cow barn and see whether it's working or not, you know. So let us... Just wait for this to load up. It shouldn't take too long because I have preloaded the game. Um, so it shouldn't take like an hour or what, like normally, you know. <laughs> wait forever for this FS22 to load up. Mind you, FS19 wasn't that fast anyway, um, loading up the, the map. So, yeah. And this is fairly a uh, detailed map with a lot of stuff in it. So yeah, it is a lot to load. Good. All right. So here we go. Um, no, we don't want auto drive to work now I forgot to disable all the mods <laughs> I normally do that good all right so now obviously let's just run here to open space um, doesn't really matter where we put it go to the purchase button into the hamburger construction animals and then we should have here um, there it is you see this one is the in-game one and this is ours um, cannot place the fence so this should be ours and I can already see it's working if you see these little icons for all the triggers that is definitely it all right so we, we we now confirmed that it is an operational mod and there's no errors on it and it is definitely a working mod so if we now run to the buying spot for it um, there we can press our button and you can immediately see it's functional and working good right so we now know we have all the triggers for a um, cow husbandry working the water is there the offloading point is there everything that you need the buying point um, yeah even for the, I think that is yeah the offloading is for the hay and s I don't think you do hay and straw yeah I think you do uh, um, offload straw I, I'm sure you do I, I honestly haven't played with with this small cow bonds before but yeah I think you do anyway guys so our next step we now confirmed that our mod is working so now we know that the thing that we are working with here is an actual working thing so we can now start customizing it all right so there's been a few requests guys how to make a custom one um, now what we're going to do now is the whole thing about a custom one is um, to 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 move the stuff about but not change the order in the i3d I'll show you now what I'm talking about. So we're going to open the i3D. That's where we're going to start off with. Start fiddling with it, you know. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. All right. So there we have it. All right. If you click on a cow barn, the first thing you'll notice, there's um, a, um, a mesh showing there, which which's not which is not visible. All right. All right, guys. So um, the navigation mesh, if you look at it, if you go here to, uh, you select it first. And if you go to, I think it's a shape file, and go into non-renderable, and just unselect that, it will become a visible plane so that you can uh, look at it. All right. So let's first talk about what I was referring to earlier on as not moving stuff around. So what you see here is a is a structure of of the i3d file. If you look at Cowbarn, 
you'll see that the index path is zero and then teleport node is zero zero food is zero one and and so on if you can go down to the whole lot then, then you've got that that is the parents guys uh, and then you've got the child's which if, if you look at navigation root node it's zero six and navigation mesh should be zero six zero which is child zero of zero six so if you follow my drift so we w we don't want to disturb this um this uh structure that's laid out here because if you open your xml you will find um if you go into the Calbon XML, um, I'm going to close the mod disk because we finished with that. Um, if you go in here, you'll find that that order of nodes is followed um, throughout this thing. If you look at things like, you see where I can start finding them. Um, what if I was node? You you you'll see. Here we go in your mapping. So here we go. If you look at if you look at this structure, if you change anything there, you need to also change it here. So if, if your structure changes, you're going to have to come in here and put the right structure in here as well, according to what it is showing here. Otherwise, you're going to find errors in game and your cow barn is not going to work. So I just want to throw that in there for you to be, be aware of that. All right. So the best is to leave it as is and don't... Don't um, s move things around. So don't take this this one, put push it up there, or add stuff here into the the main structure. You can add children, but don't move around, move, move parents around. You know they're bit, bit particular. <laughs> but if you do, then you're gonna have to just fix it up in the in the XML. Right, so now that we have our navigation mesh visible, or or the actual mesh there that we can see, we can actually start working with it. A uh, few things I want to just bring your attention towards this. If you select it, um, if you open your window and go into user attributes, you'll see that it has got a script running that it's a type of animal type is cow. It's set as cow. So we're going to um, ignore that for now. I want to show you how to make um, add on more meshes onto this so we can uh, enlarge this mesh area and then from there we will create a, create a new navigation mesh all right so our first order of business is just having a look at this so let's not worry i just want to show you that it's um it's got the attribute for cows um that can roam on it because this is a cow barn obviously um, but i'll show you how to set that as well a bit later on but first um let's have a look now if you look at on the right you will see under the shape there's a few attributes that we need to take note of. Cast shadow, so it's basically the first four. Remember, we used the non-renderable. It, it was like that, so we uh, disabled that so that we can actually see the mesh, all right? And then the next thing, very important, is the mask of it. It's FE. If you open here on the three dots, you'll see that seven out of the eight is uh, selected. And if you if you unselect these, they change um, the, the, um, the bit mask changes so it needs to be seven of them to give you fe but the easiest is just to copy that control c and then you apply that attribute to your your your, your, your new mesh or, or your new plane that you're going to create so let's do that for now so i can show you how to enlarge this so that's the the whole thing about the custom cow is to have the animals walk in a different space you know or a larger space or a smaller space or a a non uh, non square space or whatever you know so uh, all you basically do is go create uh, primitive and plane once the plane is created you cut it control X drop it in the root node control V remember we don't want to change the um, this uh, file hierarchy or um, order it needs to stay zero 06 so that will become now zero 01 zero 061 you know so um, there it is and that little square block is the new plane you can move that now about do not move up and down never move up and down and don't do control b uh, uh control b for banana um, is the normal placement one and we don't want to use that all you do is move x and y to move it around on the plane all right so otherwise you're going to have a problem and your cows is not going to walk properly and they're going to jump here and jump there <laughs> and do all funny things so now guys we want to first of all now that we've duplicated or, or made this plane, sorry, not duplicated it, we've made a new one. 
we want to apply those same attributes so you go to the first one and select that first tree that um, was there and obviously once you've done the whole mask you unfortunately now have to come back to each plane and make it non-renderable again it's gonna it's a time-consuming job guys but that's what it's all about all right and then the last thing you need to do here is type in fe or paste the fe from the previous one if you want go into the three dots you have to do this and click ok to to confirm because <coughs> otherwise for some reason if you just put fe there and move to the next one um yeah it, it loses that um the the mask so go in there confirm it so now if i go back and i come back to it you'll see it stays there it's already saved into that um mask into this shape all right so there we go guys so all that's left for us to do now is take this um this one new um plane or whatever you want to call it and make it bigger like so and stretch stretch it as much as you want and as far as you want and you can overlap them it doesn't matter how much it actually has to overlap guys um but it doesn't matter how much as long as they do overlap and like i say do not move up and down just move x and y the red and the blue and you'll be all fine and now you can duplicate this plane Control d duplicate this plane um, make it nice and big as big as you want and um, there's been a few requests for custom um, round shapes so now that in order to do a round shape all you'll do is uh, let me just go this side and duplicate another one um, we will now just make it smaller again because that is the only way that you can do a custom round shape uh, with squares because that squares is the only thing you have um, to work with if you haven't noticed yet that your actual pixels in giant editor is squares <laughs> if you come in close to them they are squares so you're going to now paint all of these um, these meshes until you've got a round shape so you duplicate so I'm going to do a few of these just like so just to give us a um, Uh, what do you call it a round edge here to work with so you can see now there's going to be an edge forming here on the on the mesh so what I'm going to do is uh, obviously just make this one a bit bigger and then bring it back like that and there you go um, and then you can obviously do the same on the other side and now once you've done with your mesh i'm going to just leave it like this say it's a custom shape and um, there's some buildings in here you can now obviously bring your buildings in um, into your mod um, if you want any buildings you can have buildings or this is just an open pasture it doesn't matter um, the main thing now to do is we want to create a, a navigation mesh from this mesh that we've made so what you're going to do is select an, the root node the, the actual um, main transform of the navigation mesh and you're going to go create navigation mesh from that and the most important thing or, or the the thing that you need to note here is the radius the radius for cows is 1.2 so you just type in there 1.2 and this is where you set now remember that attribute it gets set up here so at the end of the day it will create a uh, mesh for cows if you want sheep or pigs uh, that will be 0 0.7 and chickens I believe is 0 0.15 so um, that is your sizes for the radiuses and once you've done there you just click on create believe it or not that's all it is and there you go guys there is your navigation mesh that's that's our um, navigation mesh gonna th be looking be looking like now after after the changes right so now that we have our nav mesh um, it's time to export this boy remember the nav mesh is not in the i3d anymore it's now external so we're going to export this so you're going to go file 
and this time you just say export selection not ex selection with files you just say export selection so it's going to stay in the same um, in the same folder and then um, I should have actually before you do that just copy this name here control C it's called nav mesh so go file export selection and then go into your folder where, where the R3D is and then just paste it there control V and save alright so now before we do anything else let's just verify that it actually um, did save it there it is nav mesh as well as its shaped file and you'll see that there is the old navigation mesh is there uh, which it used to call so um, we'll get back to that just in a flash the next thing to do is now we can delete this out of the game or not out of the game but out of the R3D and it will stay there now we're going to move about all the other stuff that is relevant to the um, to the mod uh, or to the cow barn, the custom one do note guys for th for the moment we we have these things visible of course it's not it's surrendered uh, selected uh, non-renderable but once we've done the whole process we're going to have to come back our final step will be to come back to each of these planes that you've created and just make them non-renderable again so that they'll be invisible but for now we want to see where to place all these things uh, or where to move them to um, yeah let's stick to that you know great so the next thing guys is the fences have a look at the fences um, fence 1 and fence 2 so fence 1 if we look at fence 1 where is fence 1 uh, just gonna select it and I'm gonna just run through them just to see okay so fence 1 is six fences and if you look at it it outlines the original uh, cow barn so that's the fences on the outer perimeter and then fence 2 I think might be in between the two troughs um, yeah that's the two nodes okay so if you <coughs> if you have a look at the XML and the fences you'll see there are the nodes there's the six nodes and the two nodes um, so if you want to add nodes if, if, if the, the, the six that's in there at the moment is not enough you're gonna have to add them here duplicate rename and then come to the XML and add them there as well so let us start with that so the fin let's just pull the fence around and see uh, how we get how we get along all right so that one we can see needs to come a little bit back just to there note 3 is at the bottom so that now we need to move to the top and once again guys do not move the X and Y Ach, uh, not the X and Y the, um, the up and down just move the X and Y always important to do that number four will be in that corner there now so now obviously we're going to bring it over here and move it up and this is now the same way that you're going to do that um, and do come in close guys so then you can um, see a little bit better more oh, word the speed is too much um, here at the bottom left uh, bottom right you'll see the speed is 31 so that is way too fast I'm going to make it one for now because um, yeah it's just going to be crazy if I try and uh, zoom it like that right so there we go I'm going to put it there like so and now I can use my little scroll wheel come in a bit closer just have a look at them basically just on the tip of the of the um, the edge of it all right so that was four number five bring it down here what you can actually do now guys um, this number four if you look at the the Z and the Y is 4586 and 2239 so if we go to this one um, we should have 4586 on the X and then we just move the Y down so you can copy and paste that to be more precise because otherwise you'll have a fence that's going to run a bit skew you know but uh, in this case I'm just showing you so what I'm saying guys is you can take that fence the previous one um, because they they are both on the same um, X axis you can copy that X control C and put it in this one so that's exactly control V on the same um, 
x y and the same with those those are on the y again not the x and this is the x again you know so i'm sure you follow what i'm saying all right so now our next one will be um number six and that's our last one there and i'm glad this works out this way because now we can um you see now I can take the previous one previous ones Y again or, or Z uh, control Z not Y sorry we don't work with the Z control C um, and drop it into this one for the Z control V and it will come to the same spot just to be safe move it in there right and now this is where we add guys control D and this is going to become node 7 so we're going to just type in there node 7 and remember what I said you're going to um, you're going to come add node 7 to the XML as well so first do all the nodes in here and then come back to to um, to the node or the next node sorry uh, node 7 come back here so that's now node 7 on that owner corner let's duplicate that control D and then uh, we're gonna go node 8 just like that and move that about and now it doesn't matter anymore because now what I'm doing now is um, is just duplicating and I'm moving it so it's already staying on the axis you know all right so duplicate again that becomes node 9 like so and then what we're going to do with this one is I am going to set it there like so once again let's just come close yeah oh, that's perfect it's all right so it's going to draw a fence now in line to the other one there hopefully <laughs> I haven't tested this guys um, so then once again control D and then that becomes 10 again I'm have to sit upright a bit I'm slouching down in my chair <laughs> I'm becoming like lazy here um, and then just move that about like so coming close again if you're coming close you can see your way off you know so just zoom in oops that's too much so that you know you're just close to the edge you know that's good and then obviously control D again and that becomes 11 move that in there I use my shift button to move faster when you um, have a slow setting there um, so yeah it can be a bit um, confusing control D Let's bring in there, and that becomes 12 before we forget. And then let's just go in close again. Yeah, that looks good. And then the last one is 13. Um, sorry, I have to do it there. Control D. Uh, okay, nice. No, 13. Oops, I must probably type there 13, eh, guys? <laughs> that will help a lot. <laughs> good and then move that back to the trough there good that's our 13 um, fence nodes and then fence node 1 and 2 stays between the troughs now uh, just a tip guys if you want to move the troughs and you've got a building here and you want to place them somewhere else it's no problem you can move them about like I say don't move them in the tree but move them here on the screen so right, guys what I was trying to say is if you want to move the um, the food and the water about um, it's not called troughs on this it's called uh, food and water so um, if you want to move that about it's pretty fine just select the main don't move it here in the in the file thing but just move it here on screen you know to a, a spot you can rotate it and do whatever you want with it as long as you don't move it up and down all should be fine um, and when you do that when you move that remember that it needs to be facing the right way for instance if you want the cows to have water there and then just bring it next to the mosque so it just does touches the mosque um, 
So I'm going to go here to 90 degrees. Always keep your things at the right angles. And then, yeah, just bring it just to touch the mask. So if you look at this other one, this other one here, um, it's, it's now got this mask here. So you're going to probably want to delete, if you've got a custom one, you're going to want to delete this main um, this main um, transform on the nav meshes, this one here, and duplicate one of your own, put it in there. Um, and then, very important, for the one that you want, you need to put a little bit of um, mesh underneath the water trough as well as the food trough. So if you go to food and you move that away, you'll find the same thing underneath that, you know. It's for the cows to, to actually um, eat on, on that plane, you know, to eat on the plane. Um, great, so now, obviously, I'm going to just go Control z on all of these changes, so we don't want to have that um, things mess about. And we were here busy with our fence nodes. We're on fence node 13. Fence node 1 and 2 was just between the two, and that is fine with me. And now, guys, the next thing to do, obviously, is do the same changes up to node 13 in our XML. Because we've added fences there. So all we're going to do is, um, from node 6, you're going to select that line, Control c create a new line, press Enter, press Home, Control v um, So that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then just rename each little piece there. That's 7. And that will be 8. And 9. 10. 11. 12. And 13. Great. Excellent. And then obviously that last one we can just delete that like so and then once you click on on the um, on the top or the bottom one it must be both purple with the red line in between that means there's no errors and that's what we want or if you click on fences the same thing purple on both s stop and start and a red line in between that means perfect okay oh gosh what did I do now I, I added an S there for some reason I was busy zooming out in the XML <laughs> crazy stuff good right so the next thing uh, down the line guys we are finished with that fences so we can close that up for now so the next thing is clear areas let's quickly talk about clear areas guys clear areas is when you place a mod in the game if you buy this cow bar now in the game the clear areas and also the level areas um, will will create a flat surface for the mod to to work on. I don't know if you've noticed when you place a mod in game, it levels the, th the, the ground and it builds up the ground so that the building is level and that's what all these areas do. Alright, so let's first start with the clear areas and then we have to obviously modify this now. If you are placing a um, this mod as a placeable in your map permanently and it's you're not going to use it as a mod then obviously the clear and level areas you can ignore that you don't have to worry about moving it about but uh, in this case I want to show you that it actually we need to do that or I'm going to just show you that we do it and how we do it and all of that and you can see here that they have made a bit more space on the for the original on the outside so there it is uh, clear area width one and height so there's the three so what we want to do is zoom out a little bit take our uh, first one the start and then just move that ways about on the edge of the um, the whole mod so that when you place this as a mod in game it's going to do that you know use it there and then obviously uh, that one we will uh, the width we're going to move that about there like so and height will be that the it's just the three the three corners um, of your whole mod you know so move that about like so and you just go over the edge a little bit don't go too far but um, just go over the edge a little bit make more space available for the placement of the mod that's basically what the the clear areas and the level areas is right so guys our next one is our foliage area 
Now the foliage area, guys, I, I don't know if you've noticed that when you place a cow barn uh, or a sheep barn or a pig barn, you, you immediately, once it's placed, there's grass growing in the barn or in the area of where the, uh, the animals walk. And that is your foliage area. So basically the same thing, same drill again. Um, where do you want the grass to grow? I'm going to cut it short here because um, we don't want to spend all day on this. So I'm going to um, just have a look at that. That's our start. Another one start and another one start. So there will be three of them. And let us just have a look. They'll have a start and an end probably inside. You see there's one, two, three corners. So that gives that block. And then the next one will be that one, uh, this one, and that one. So they basically made three blocks um, covering this thing um, between the between the two uh, troughs and then also on the two sides um, so we're going to just move those about in my case let's just take this first block and then move it about to put cross for us way up there and then the width will be there And the height will obviously be down there at the bottom. Alright, and then foliage start here. This is not going to look as good as it should, guys. Um, because obviously we are just customizing this a little bit. And then once again, yeah, I'm going to overlap a little bit. So it doesn't really matter. Because it's just, it's just an area where the grass grows. So um, let's just start with in so that will be this whole block and then the last one is obviously this one here we need to take right to the top again up there and then the width go up there like so and the height will be down here that will just mark out the, this big block for us to grow grass and once again um, on this ones, I don't think there is anything in the XML for um, for that, so you don't have to clear a start. Oh, you have, yeah. You see, there is. So you're going to have to add for those. If you if you add more of them, foliage area start height start with um, yeah. You're going to have to add for the clear area. Uh, if you do, uh, I'm just going to think now the clear area you don't have to do because you're going to do just the outlines but for the foliage areas if you add more you're going to have to add here as well so for instance um, if we go now foliage area 3 start we want to duplicate that if you, if you for instance have extra gross that you want to add and you need to make more um, areas grow gross so then what you'll do is you'll duplicate that one call it foliage area 4 uh, start like so and remember we're working now in this uh, number it's 0 012 so if you go into the XML under foliage area 3 you'll see it's 0 012 to 1 that's the um, start is 0 012 2 so if you go in here you'll see 0 012 0 012 and then start is 2 0 012 2 so foliage area 4 will be 0, 12, 3 so then you're going to just put in here in your XML foliage area 3 start or uh, 4 start and then 0, 12, 2 um, or 3 sorry will be the one for that so you're going to add that to the R3D mappings duplicate the line control C control V and add as many as you need you know until you've end that so I'm just going to delete that I just wanted to show you that uh, I'm not going to be bothered with that Right, that brings us to the end of the foliage areas. So the next one is obviously the uh, level areas. Now the level areas, guys, is the is a, a tiny bit of space that gets leveled for um, vehicles and your uh, your triggers and all the things that's here in front of the um, in front of the uh, um, the troughs and that where you offload and all that, you know. So wherever you move those triggers you're going to just have your level areas doing that so if you look at the area that they've um, specified for that year that is the start the width and the height again 
So just remember, when we were in the game, you saw the triggers are all in front of the troughs here. So that is what it's for, the level areas. So just set that according to where you've got it. At mine, it's going to stay exactly the same. So there's nothing to change there. So we're going to have a look at that. Okay, guys. So our next one, obviously, is the paint areas. Now, I've got, honestly, between you and me, no idea what the paint areas does. It is there. And if you look at the paint areas, it is definitely covering the whole mesh area. So um, same same as the as the um, the clear area ones that we had, uh, not the clear area. The uh, which was it? Yeah, it's the clear areas, not the level areas. The clear areas. The clear areas also um, showed the whole map, you know, so or, or the whole mod, I would say. So we're gonna just duplicate that um, just pull it over um, just a little bit over the edges like that not very important to be 100% uh, specific as long as you just go over the edges a little bit cover the whole of your mod that should all be fine great guys okay so that's the painted areas um, the next in Next one is test areas, and once again, I'm not really sure what the test areas does. Um, but if you look at how they are um, set up, it's just a start and an end, and it's just sort of diagonally showing the the size of the the mod. And if you look at it, this this one has got a Y angle to it as well. If you well, they both have some Y characteristic. If you now come like vertical to you or on the side of your plane between the two the one is at the bottom and the one is on the top so it's probably got to do something with um, placing the mod and looking at what's underneath and below ground wise you know so levels and all of that so all we're going to do in this case is move it obviously again to the extremes of our of our of our mod so just put that on the sides like so, roughly, and then bring that one a little bit back like that, and then obviously just bring it over, yeah, it looks good, and then the same with that one, and that one we'll do on this corner here on top, so it is on the on the, on the the corners, uh, but ad adjacent to each other, you know, so uh, across from one another, if you, fi if you follow my drift, yeah. Good. Uh, just bring that over. Sorry, that's not going to be in the center. I think roughly. I'm sure if if you go over it, it's better than than not to have enough. You know. So bring that in again a bit. Oh, that's not good. Control Z. If you make a mistake, you can Control Z on this. I'm going to leave it like that, that I'm sure will do the trick. Right, so our next one is the indoor areas. Now the indoor areas, if I'm correct, has got to do with your feeding and your water. So if we come closer to there, we can just have a look at that. Indoor areas, yep, yeah, it's definitely going to be there. So once again, um, if we look at where they are, that the start is there on that corner. And the width is there and the height is there so that is basically marking out your troughs so if you were to move this feeding troughs away remember you have to move the um, the the indoor areas with it as well just to make sure that you have that same um, area marked there for that all right and then the tip occlusion the tip occlusion update areas once again you can see it's on the on the other side of the of your um, markers, and it actually covers the whole of the mesh. So if we go up to the start and the end, once again it's ad adjacent or whatever what do you call it adjacent. I just want to see if this has got any Y um, properties, but it doesn't look like it. Now this one has got no Ys, so it's just marking the whole territory again. Tip occlusion, it's probably got to do with um, places where it's like the tip um, on ground where you cannot tip stuff. So, or it is probably 
got to do with your um yeah i think it's either got to do with the tipping of stuff or the um the straw spreading you know that type of thing has maybe it's got something to do with that i'm not a hundred percent on that guys uh, to be honest but once again we'll just move them to the extremes of the of the mod move them about the start and the end a bit too far to my liking so let's just bring it back a wee bit sure that's enough yep that looks like it might be good and then the last one is this one here the end now we're going to bring that way is over here to this corner come in a bit closer yeah that looks good I'll leave it like that just leave it like that's fine right guys and the two last things on your um, cow barn small is the collision um, that you can just leave as is it's already set for you on the troughs um, so there's nothing there to do and the visuals is your actual um, stuff for winter and all that you know so there's nothing to do in there you just leave it as is um, it, it, it's um, nothing that you can move about or need to need to tweak or whatever great and then lastly guys we want to come back to these meshes and just make them non-renderable again on the shape side just remember to now uh, sit and go to the painstaking um <laughs> process of marking each of them um non-renderable so they can disappear into thin air and um, just go out of the way alrighty then once you've done all of those you can right click and collapse all and our carbon is all done if you select the main transform get yourself a nice view of it and then click save and we are all done um, with the exception of the XML needs to be modified so we are obviously going to go into our XML um, not talking of that i3d mappings but what i'm talking about is the nav mesh the new nav mesh that we've created this one here is uh, under animals where it says cow um, it's calling the wrong i3d remember we called it uh let's go in there just nav mesh that's the old nav mesh so that one and shape file you can actually just delete we're not going to use that anymore we're going to use this one now it's our new one so we're going to copy that, Control c copy the name, go in here, double click on the nav mesh, Control v to paste it, and there you go, it's calling the right nav mesh i3d now from the from the XML. And that is it guys, you save, save that. Right guys, so the only thing left now is to uh, quickly do a test, so if you go into um, any map and just open it up, notice the first thing you'll see there is your mod. Um, this is now if you've gone for the mod um, and then there is no icon if you look at your um, description you'll find uh, cowboy small that icon has got an error it can't load it because there is no icon in the file yet so if we want the icon in the mod we just copy an icon for a cowboy or make your own icon and put it in the mod and just make sure that it's there and the directory is pointing to it and that will all be fine so let's load in Right guys, here we are in the map. I just want to quickly um, get some money for us. Um, obviously we're going to need bucks. Just going to load a few bucks for us. And then obviously we want to buy some land uh, first. We want a piece of, a uh, good piece of land. Uh, main farm is here. Uh, let's go into farmlands. And we can maybe buy this property here. Make sure it's nice and big space to to place that big cow pasture it's not a small pasture anymore so let's just buy a few properties around it so that we don't run out of space something like that i think that should should be sh uh, surely should be more than enough <laughs> so let's go into the properties into the pie the hamburger and then into animals and select our little um, cow barn pasture thingamabobby and Let's just drop it in here into this field or into this one here where it's not looking nice ah, let's drop it in this field so it's, uh, i think it might be 
better looking here and there you are guys now if we come in close we find that some of our poles is not there for some reason um, it's one two three four five it looks like six so that extra ones that we added is not working but all our grass is growing and um, working nicely that is that's a good um, thing and also this corner that we've made is not working all right guys so you can clearly see here yeah, that I've got a um, few problems on the cow barn the fence node is missing according to this fence node uh, fences fence zero node six um, so we're going to have a look at that area and then also it's got a warning that says missing fence node for placeable there's the same one and then it says food place one is outside of nav mesh for um, so we've got the food place one that is outside um, I don't think I've moved that around but maybe with my fiddling around there of moving the um <laughs> moving the the uh, um the food places I've probably moved something out of place so we're going to have a look at that just to fix it up all right guys I found th the problem with the nodes um I actually see that for the fence nodes when you add beyond um node 6 for instance we've added 7 to through to 13 you also need to go through the i3 i3d mappings and have a look there is also i3d mappings for the nodes uh, there's one to six and remember one and two was between the troughs so we're going to have to add a few in here so we're going to grab that control c copy that make us a few lines here uh, home and then control v v three four five six seven i think we added this is one two three four five six seven that we added yes and then obviously we want to uh, once again uh, rename these for uh, seven and this eight and this nine let's work it ten and this work it eleven my word Sometimes it's um, better to, um, and that will be 12 and 13. Sometimes this little pop up thing is actually irritating. <laughs> and then we need to now uh, take the, the node the note mappings and just verify them here one at a time. So go back to our fences, uh, fence one, fence num node number seven. Note number seven will be zero eight oh six. Control copy that into our XML. So fence seven will be that, and just control V over there. That will be six, and then it's just a matter of going down the list, copying the note index path. Control C, and then overwriting it here to number eight. And I think if you if you look at the the pattern that will be six, that will be seven, and this will become eight. So we can just actually just change them here nine and that will be ten. So they'll be one behind the, the nodes. Uh, that will be eleven. And we should end off with twelve at fence node thirteen. So let's just verify that in here. Uh, at fence node thirteen we should be zero eight at zero twelve so in here then will be zero eight zero twelve excellent so let's just uh, delete those extra lines and save and let's retest okay guys so uh, just got all this boring stuff out of the way so let's quickly buy some farmland for us to test with can't remember remember which field we used but um, yeah let's go in there and let's just purchase at the hamburger in the construction uh, animals and there it is cannot place a fence there obviously not 
what I'm interested in is to see now if all our fences are there. I didn't see any um, errors. And then if you have a look, uh, let's just go visit our cow barn. Um, here it is. Cow pasture visit. There it is. Look at that, guys. Beautiful. If you now look at the fences, all nice and, and working. Let's just buy a few animals just for fun. I like these little cows, so um, select them. Just drop 15 in there. Okay. And obviously, guys, now you will see um, your cows will be happy to walk around in the whole new area where they can um, be happy cows. And if you add now a custom building or something that you wanted here as, as well, um, yeah, it's just up to you what you want to do with um, to create. The building has got no significance. Everything works via XML and triggers, and this is all the stuff that makes a cow barn work. So all you need to do now is put your own building to this and modify the triggers to work in the right spot in the right place. And yeah, you can see they are navigating, they are eating, and the sounds should be working. Oh yeah, they are munching like crazy, uh, and they are bought. They are they are um, making the cow noises as well. <laughs> Good stuff. Great guys. Um, I'm very happy and chuffed with that, guys. What I will suggest though, um, as a tip, when you do your troughs, um, what I've done here is I've actually built this whole um, area around um, that. But rather have your, your feeding um, stuff on the side so that you don't bring them into the meshes, you know, like like I've built this U-shaped thing around all this. And also when you drive with a vehicle in here, you're going to have a difficulty um, making U-turns and maneuvering with, with vehicles in here. So it's best to have those um, or, or not, uh, if, you, if you catch what I'm saying, don't have this in the middle of it, I'd rather have it on the sides, you know. So build your meshes, um, your, your, your areas, build it from here to the right, that way, instead of bringing them out past this point. Otherwise you might get problems, um, like I know there was this one area about the trough that's not on the mesh or whatever. And I think it could be because I've moved it around, but just for interest sake, um, yeah, put it all on the one side and um, try try to rather not have them because remember we moved those points uh, on the ends and the clear and the leveling areas and all that um, we didn't move the leveling areas but we did move the clearing areas and you can see here where the clearing areas cleared the terrain it, it actually cleared all this bushes or all this uh, um, wheat what is this wheat yeah so that is what the clearing areas is for it's uh, making the space available for uh, that and here you can see my little uh, fence that I've made around it worked nice but the um, the grass areas obviously we didn't add anything in there for the grass so that is something that you can also do is add more um, more for that foliage area so add more points for the foliage area and put it in there and you'll have the grass growing in there too you know so yeah that is what that is for yeah, I think it came out nice. If you look at the the clear clearing areas, it cleared all the things all around as we selected. Yeah, that looks very good. And it also put this little grass pattern in here and then into the soil on that side. Yeah, which which I think yeah, it looks beautiful. Good guys, so at the end of the day, that's your custom cow pen, as big as you want it. And um, one more tip guys, if you open the XML for the cow barn um, there is a place under at the bottom under the animals um, there we go the max number animals is 15 so do remember to, to up that I mean we've made a huge um, animal pen now and you can put that up to whatever you want um, I've made one um, on the Gharib map for 300 cows and um, yeah you can place 300 cows in there and do then um, let me just see if there is any food capacity you're gonna if uh, you're gonna have the food capacity need you need to push that up so 
if you take 15 and um, make the ratio to capacity 11,000 for instance if you double that you have to double this you know so just remember um, to make make that all all that changes you know um, what else is there I'm just gonna have a quick browse uh, storage capacity the same thing here milk if you double the amount of animals double the capacities here for milk and water as well that is something that you need to definitely keep in mind so this and I know there was one for slurry and all that as well I just want to verify where that is uh, where is that is there anything like that it's a capacity just run through the XML and update all the capacities don't go overboard um, but just work with the ratio you know work out the ratio for yourself if you want to double the animals or make it 10 times that much remember to uh, um, change the capacities also because otherwise you're gonna have run out of food or water before um, it's needed you know so yeah there you go guys max uh, that's angling leveling yeah that's got nothing to do with that there's the sound and then do you remember the the icon um, change the icon for yourself um, we quickly need to talk about putting this in your map now obviously when you place this in your map um, you will do all the work we've done now and then you'll import this i3d now um, let's actually physically do that and then I can show you how to sort that out and then do uh, there's two things for placing it in your map you're going to place it first in your placeholders folder so um, let me just first get into a map uh, map builds no map backups 22 use my uh, test map for that um, open that up uh, in there so the difference now is you're not going to use the mod desk file you delete the mod desk file um, but before you delete it just take the store items and put it in your store items directory so we'll quickly do that um, let's go in here that's our map alpine now where we are now and this is our cow thing so if you open the uh, now that's the in-game stuff sorry guys we need to go to the mods folder where our actual cow one small is lying and then take this mod disk so this store items line you need to copy that and put it in your store items of your map so that will be your first order of business um, I'm just gonna put the cow barn down here on this field for now just for fun just want to use it as an example I won't save the map though because um, I want to keep keep it as it is because we already have a cow barn there at the the main farm you know so I don't want to add another cow barn <laughs> but for the purpose of the video let's do that so go file import um, uh, first of all you can't import it you need it in your map very important never import something that's not in your map so what we'll do is we'll copy this whole thing that we've made now just copy it and then go into our map which is here find your directory um, this is now your actual map um, mine is just called test map find your directory where you put your imports or your placeables or whatever I'm gonna put it in here just for now and then we're gonna import it so I want to simulate what you need to do if you if you don't want to use it as a mod but a stationary item that's in your game um, whether whether you want it loaded in one game mode or, or the other but it's it will be available not as a mod but as a built-in feature in your map alright so file import and then we're gonna go into obviously our map which will be on my uh, maps backups 22 uh, test map and then we go maps map alpine placeables cow barn small and there it is cow barn small good remember we don't work with the mesh uh, the nav mesh again because it's already being imported um, via the XML so we're just going to place the cow barn control and B and it's as simple as that move it about where you want it all right so we want to place it there we're happy with it and then that's all we want um, we want to cut this now control X and go into our gameplay uh, somewhere into our map I think somewhere we have a 
placeholders folder very important to have the placeholders folder uh, map boundaries infrastructure that's not entitled players form there must be something there let me just run there to the to the players form now I just want to up the speed again a bit so I can move about faster up here now there I know there's some stuff here there it is place all this folder that's the easiest way to get to it you need a folder with attributes on it um, uh, user attributes if you look at the place all this folder it's got a, um, a script running an on create script placeholders dot on create so if if you don't have a placeholders folder just create a new uh, transform file create transform rename it placeholders like that doesn't the name isn't very significant but just rename it so you know what it is and then um, what you'll do is go on to uh, the, the attribute name here and you click on let me just create a new um, transform group and then I can do it with you it's on small letters create with a cap uh, like that on create and you just select the script callback here and you click add and then in the script callback you type the following it's placeholders with a capital P I believe um, if you go here into uh, its placeholders dot on create so it's capital P and capital C all right um, so we go back to our transform and remember to rename it but the script is place like that holders dot small letters on on uh, create like that on create and then that's it and then you drop you drop uh, drop the thing in there control v your um your little cow barn there it is cow barn small and now we can press f to go and view it and there it is now what wh what happens now is this is now invisible in the game when you load the map in the game itself but it is visible in the editor that's what that script does it's a placeholders folder and you can obviously name that now placeholders you can have as many as these as you want or you can actually put that script on any folder or anything in the game and it will make it invisible in the game you know so the only reason why we have this here is to now um, obviously get the positioning for the XMLs and then it's the normal stuff that you do for placing stuff in a game we've done that a million times on the channel but I'll just do it one more time for you guys to um, have a refresher on that we'll go into the in-game folder farming simulator 22 mind you we already have a, uh, a cow barn in our uh, XML so let's just go to our game uh, to our map open two files the store items is the one and then the other one is the placeables all right placeables and find the cow husbandry cow there it is placeables Hus cow bond small you can take any maps um, cow bond and just duplicate it I'm just gonna grab it like that control C and go right to the bottom um, down there paste it in there and now what we're going to do now we need to change this directory of it to our Calbon small XML which is now in placeables Calbon small there is Calbon small XML so what we want is from our map directory which is uh, test map so we want this everything after that copy that so that is your your, your directory structure uh, pointing to this XML all right in your placeables uh, XML so we're going to overwrite this uh, up to D control V like so change all the slashes so remember they must lie that to the right those forward slashes and then uh, lastly verify the name of the XML make sure that because uh, if there's a change in your name so what I like to do is just uh, select this by slowly clicking twice copy the name back into our thing double click on it control V and it will overwrite the name that's in the actual directory that's where you 
sorts out all the spelling nonsense and that. All right. And then the, the, the next thing is the positioning. So we'll go into the map again. And this is why we have it here. Control, Shift, and C. Once you should click on the first one. Control, Shift, and C copies all three for you. Come back here. Just highlight the whole of all of that that's in the position. Control and V just to paste. So it's V for Victor. And um, there you go. That's our positioning. And rotation, the same draw. Our rotation is zero, zero, zero. But if yours were different, you just control shift and uh, copy, control shift and C there, back in here, overwrite the rotation. And then lastly, if you don't have a default form property equals true in there, just do put it in, copy it from any other uh, XML in the game, and the form ID 1, uh, if it's your default form, um, it needs to be form ID 1. That is two important ones in there. If this cow bond that you place is on a second form, and it is on a um, second piece of property which is not the default property when you start the game. In other words, if it's a, a cow farm that you need to buy with land and whatever, then you will make this default property equals false. And the farm ID will be the farm that you want to add it to. So if it's the second farm, it will be farm ID 2. If it's the third farm on your map, farm ID 3, X, and, and so on, you know. And then the last thing you want to do is in your XML now um, of the, the cow barn, um, there's a thing that you want to add uh, on the base. Here by the base um, can be renamed. That is fine. But there is um, a line that you want to uh, can be sold. Must be must be here. Uh, where is it? Price. There should actually be a can be sold as well in. Um, so what you'll do now, oh, let's just first, fi before we do that XML, let's just first finish off. Um, we're going to take th this and then in front of that um, add a dollar, uh, dollar, map their dollar like that. So you copy that, control C. Uh, you can just type it in there as well. Very important. If that's not there, it's not going to get your um, XML file alright so that is very important and then the next thing you want to do now is your store items we want to grab a line any line copy it and just add it control V come back to our placeables XML grab everything after the map there so that whole line there with the XML everything control C go back to the store items and then just overwrite this whole line there that we've duplicated like that and that's your store items done um, if it was an in in game thing that you added to the store items it needs the dollar data in front um, and then obviously the whole directory where it's found in on the in game and that's only for the store items if you were in the placeables and it was in game it does not need the dollar data it just needs the data so for some reason they know when it's in placeables when it's the in game and versa vice you know on the other side as well right then you can save it both of them save them and that will all be fine um, the next thing is the mod desk you can delete this mod desk now out of your cow once more <coughs> sorry so the mod desk uh, it's not used when you you cannot have more than one mod disk in your map and you already have on your map directory you have a mod, mod disk to to tell the game this is your map so all the other mod disks in your map in the whole of your map if you have other mods in there you have to delete them but do take the data that's in them and place it in the right places like the store items that we've just converted uh, or replaced into into our store items you know whatever is in your mod disks so that mod disk you can delete we're done with it <coughs> and then um, lastly guys is the directories um, obviously needs to change as well um, first things is the i3d for the cow barn it's not going to find it now anymore because it's not a mod anymore um, remember the mod disk um, pointed to the XML and the XML called this I3D here but now we need to tell this 
XML that the R3D is now not in a mod anymore it is actually now here so what we're going to do is take this whole line here uh, not the fences one um, sorry um, this one here for for that and we need to grab this whole line here to the XML copy that once again oh sorry we, d we don't need the XML side but I'll just delete it so paste it in here so what we want is maps map alpine place with carbon carbon small dot XML we can just delete like there and that is now the new place of the i3d and then um, our icon once again you can um, leave this for the in-game one or you can put your own in there uh, your own file of your carbon take a little picture make your own little icon for it and put it in the folder and just reroute this directory to the same place where it is and um, and now also the mesh has also changed remember the the nav mesh find the nav mesh directory um, where is it so that is in-game stuff doesn't matter there is a nav mesh somewhere I know it is somewhere that's the i3d why don't I see it now just gonna quickly find it guys it is here somewhere That's the fences. My word, am I blind? What's going on here? Control F, nav. There it is. You see how it's hiding. So this also needs the directory. Um, and we're going to need to take that out there. And that is the whole lot, guys. So nav mesh is maps, map alpine, nav mesh, i3d. So when you look at that directory, you must find it um, there in your map. So there it is, map alpine, placeables, carbon small, nav mesh, i3d. So there it is, maps, map alpine, placeables, carbon. So you, you just always have to verify these things. Because otherwise, when it loads, it's going to not find it, and you're going to have a problem. It's going to give you an error, and the thing won't show up in game, and you're going to wonder, hey, but why? <laughs> All of that. Good, so now that <coughs> all that is done and sorted out, uh, we, we wanted to add the two things to the base, uh, one to the base and one to the store data. Um, I want to just grab you the lines there. Um, where did I put that? Golly gosh, guys, after about 200 attempts, I finally found it. Uh, the two lines you want to add is to your store data, you want to add can be sold. Uh, just in case you want to sell that uh, cow barn again um, in your map so you copy that line go into your uh, cow barn just uh, under um, category anywhere there create a new lawn paste it in there can be sold like that and then the last thing you want to add is this line here bought with farmland to bought with farmland so that line you want to grab control C um, and then go into your store, into your XML under the base. Just create a new line under the base and drop it in there. So there is everything, guys. So that is, in a nutshell, everything you need to do to copy it into your and have it permanently in your in your game. So the store items is there. The placeable loads it into that um, coordinates. The default farm property is done. I've explained bo both those for you. Um, and this line you can generate if you don't have this. Go into any of your <coughs> in game maps and um, just grab it from there. It might be smaller than this, it might be only one line, uh, but it's alright. Um, the other way to do it is the way I've got it here is go into any, any map in game, buy a cow barn, save the map make a note of the save game go in here into the directory of your save games under um, farming simulator 22 years your save games open it up and go into your placeables here and find the very last thing that's in there is normally the last thing that you've bought and just copy that whole section like I've done here into that and then modify it accordingly change the directory put your own rotations and stuff in and that should do it and then uh, yeah, I've talked about the store items. We've done all the changes here. Um, 
and we have talked about the the limits and the um, um, the the carrying capacity and amounts of uh, water and feed and all of that so so yes guys and then once you've saved everything open your map and test it and it should start in there remember also just to make sure that before you import your i3d open the i3d on its own and do make sure that it is zeroed what i mean by that is once you've opened the i3d on its own it must always have a zero uh, on all its coordinates otherwise it won't import into the right place via xml you might place it in the right place in the editor um, but uh, it, it might not end up in the right spot you know um, if if this is not zero yeah in on its own when you open the i3d on its own so yeah that's something that many times happened to me before i exported something into my map uh, i didn't open it i didn't zero it here on its own and then the moment you put the coordinates in the xml though it's in the editor it's in the wrong uh, right place but when it loads into the map it adds um the coordinates from the map towards the ones that in the i3d and then whoop it ends up lying somewhere else on the map you know <laughs> in the wrong spot <laughs> but anyway guys that is how you do a custom cow barn uh, cow um, husbandry and obviously this works to all the animals you can from this now you can build a chicken one a pig one a sheep one a horse one as uh, as as many as you want and as big as you want and just remember take these troughs and move the troughs or not the trough don't move the troughs but move the meshes to to the one side to the blue side for instance here so that all your meshes um, and when you move that areas so that they are not going over this area here you know so because it, it I think that is what confusing um, by placing of that uh, food trough or the food area so um, just uh, take a note of that when you do it design so that your trough is on the side of the of the uh, cow barn or, or the animal husbandry and not in the middle like mine you know so yeah that's just one tip that i can lastly give you right guys so uh, just having a quick look then on how you would approach it um, to actually build the custom cow into your map it is exactly the same as any other placeable um, that you would build into your map so you follow everything um, exactly as we've explained so far in the video and um, the with with one difference being that you will go into your map folder like my map that I'm currently on in the editor is the test map or just a ma map that I'm using for tests and stuff and making videos and then what you will do is grab your um, grab your custom cow that that we we've uh, um, taken from the in-game directory so I just want to open this in a new window so I've already got that and then you copy that cowbone small either from the in-game I will suggest copy it from the in-game but if you followed the video instructions you can use that same cowbone with um, everything in it and then just drop it into your map folder obviously um, just want to see where it is I'm going to put it under placeables and I think I've already done that there it is I think what I'll do I'll just overwrite it because um, obviously the one in there I don't think is uh, exactly the same because we've done all the work on that now all right so here it is then um, yeah, yeah this one has got the custom nav mesh and everything in it and what we'll do then obviously is just get this terrain editing um, or this thing a little bit bigger for us go file import and then you'll just import your i3d of the cow barn. so test map map plans the place was cow barn small grab the i3d and you will start the same process um, find the spot where you want to actually build this this cow barn in my case I'm going to just drop it in this field here for now just to have an example and obviously the cow barn will need to go into your placeholders folder so make a note of that don't leave it in your in your um, in your game directory or, or in the scene graph anywhere just has to go into your placeholder because it's going to be imported via the xml into the game when you load the game so you don't need it in your map folder but we want to see see it and view it so that's why it needs to be in the placeholders folder and then i'm going to just go um, open that yeah i'm just going to go control b to place it 
and then what you will do then is you will you will handle this mod now or or this uh placeable as a placeable and do all your all your uh, fencing and everything you will do in the area here now for instance i want to build a cow barn here a custom one for instance in this area then you will do your fencing and and everything we've discussed in the mod you'll actually do it here physically in the game with with one exception guys the area that you need to place it on needs to be level ground so you're going to have to level the ground first um, because once you start working with the meshes um, and creating the nav mesh you cannot really do that on unlevel ground it is terribly difficult i've done it once before in my nevada south africa map where i've had a cow a custom cow that was down a slope oh my word uh yeah your cows half of the time they walk in the air because um, the meshes needs to be aligned with the with the actual terrain and um having a square thing aligned with a non uh with with a flexible thing <laughs> it's impossible so it's better to flatten your terrain so pick a terrain that is already flat or flatten it in the map and then build your custom cow or your custom uh, horse or pig or whatever you want to build in that area all right and then what you'll do exactly all the same steps uh, once you've done all of that customizing i'm just going to leave it as is as if we've done all of that work here in the map and just imagine yourself that the fences is now going in the perimeter of this nice area and uh, all the thousands of uh, um, little um, um, planes that we've made f to create the nav mesh has been placed into place um to be honest guys it's a lot of work to do that um small planes but at the end of the day you'll find that when you create the mesh it's actually going to follow um sort of a line so it won't be round you're never going to get a round thing you'll never get a round mesh you'll have a little blocks of um uh, straight surfaces you know uh, making up the round you know so for instance it will go like that and like that and like that and like that for instance if if you try get that round thing but yeah it's a it's a trial and error thing go for it once you've done with your whole thing and done your your mesh and the nav mesh is up and installed uh, or created then what you do is you take your cow bond small and you go file um export selection just as in the past um, in this case i will say selection with files will we want files yeah we can you can choose selection with files but but uh, yeah choose selection with files and then what you do is you you choose your own cow bond the, the one that you've imported and you're going to overwrite it you're going to go save and you're going to say replace it yes and then with the two questions you say yes because you want to keep everything in in the standard game that is now if you've used one of the in-game cow bonds if you've worked from a mod um, you cannot do that you're going to say no to both questions so then you're going to work sit with all those texture files and everything in your in your uh, map folder um, but in this case we leave it all in the standard base game and it, you say yes to those and um, i'm just going to go yes and yes and then there it is now it's exported and the rest of the stuff is exactly the same you're going to use uh, the placeables and the store items to pull it in and remember this must be still be in your placeholders folder you can't leave it here in the game directory i've said that already and then the last thing that you definitely have to do is in your cow bond then once you've exported and overwritten it you need to definitely open it up because I'm going to show you now why. Remember, our Calbon was at zero, but now because we've exported, it, it will take on this um, this coordinates where where it's been placed. So you you can't uh, um, import it then from there. I'll just wait for it to open. There it is, and now you see now it's taken the actual coordinates where where we've have it in game. So you have to zero all of this again, even the rotation. You have to zero all of that to bring it back to zero and then you can use and then you save it like so and now close it and now what you can do you can use your xml and this coordinates from the from the from the editor you take these same ones and put that in your xml and the xml will place it exactly here 
All right. So if you don't do that step, you're going to place it with this coordinates. It's going to end up somewhere there in the bushes or somewhere else on the map because it's going to take the coordinates in the I3D together with this ones in the in the in the uh, in the editor, and it's going to combine the two, and <laughs> it's not going to end up where it's where you think it's going to be <laughs> or you want it actually. Great, guys. So I hope it makes sense, and that's how you then do a custom thing in your map. Build it custom in your map and export it out and then pull it in via XML. Um, and remember, it's two XMLs. The one is the placeables and the other one is the store items, exactly as we have discussed it earlier on. Good. Well, that then brings, brings us to the end of the, um, the custom cow barn. And thank you so, so much for watching, guys. Remember to like and subscribe and do share my videos with friends and uh, other, other guys that like customizing things and building stuff. And um, yeah, please do consider supporting my channel. Um, there is links in the description for everything, for my website, for my support, everything. Thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.